Are you hiring? Do you know where to post your job to find out the best candidates? ZipRecruiter.com. ZipRecruiter posts your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click. And then ZipRecruiter actively looks for the most qualified candidates and invites them to apply. That's why 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day, Gareth. I use Gareth Core uses that. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. One more time. Try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. You're listening to the dollop. This is Boom. a bi-weekly American history podcast. Each week, once a week, I... Tea drinker, lover of watches. Oh wow! Smeller of grass. What are you smelling grass for? Dave no. Anthony Think reads okay? a story from American history to his friend Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Why the touching? This is the problem when you get cameras involved. Now you're adding like visual elements that. I love you, <laughs> Gareth. Should just do these naked and not tell anyone. What does that mean? I, I'm trying to get naked with you by any I means necessary. His, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. <laughs> Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> My room's playing. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. I done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda at the court. Um, we have some dates coming up. Wow. For, uh, live dollops. Yeah, it's very. we're getting very professional in here. Um, we've added a second show in San Francisco on the 2nd of February. We have added a second show in Seattle on the 22nd of February. A second show in Portland on the 23rd. Of February in Kansas City, no. In Indianapolis, uh, we have added a second show on the 3rd of uh, March. And now we have on sale uh, Minneapolis tickets on the 16th of August. I believe that sold out or it's very close to sold out. So we're um, looking at a couple of options to open things up. Yeah, Um, might do it where the Vikings play. Might do it where the Vikings play, which is known as the Hair Dome. Hair Dome. Hair Dome. Uh, also be at the Improv on the twenty fourth, doing uh, uh, unfortunately a comedy show with Karen Kilgariff. Unfortunately, and Karen Dave, the twenty fourth, people aren't going to be able to make that because they'll be going to my show at ten p.m. at Flappers, where I'll be doing an hour, not sharing it with anyone. So that's I hate to do this. I hate to do this. Doesn't sound good. The twenty seventh of uh, January, I'll be doing set list uh, somewhere. You can. That's find a list that. of sets. Don't do this. Uh, Valentine's Day, come spend it with me. At uh, Flappers again. <laughs> Won't you? Th- this is the hard sell. Um, yeah, and then there's other stuff. I'll yeah, don't worry about up. those. Okay. <laughs> I think that um, went pretty bad. So uh, we have uh, T-shirts that are for sale on Redbubble. Most of our art is done by James Fosdyke. He does tons of our art. Uh, Christopher Horn does a little bit. Those are both on Redbubble. Um, there's a company called Teespring, which is... Uh, Oddly, has a lot of artists' uh, uh, art on their site, and they're selling T-shirts, and uh, they don't have the right to do that. Um, and then you give them a takedown notice, and they take their time, and uh, we'll get, and then ten more pop up. So that's Teespring. Do not ever, ever, ever use Teespring. That's our. That's our. We're starting a campaign against Teespring because they're doing it to so many artists. They're doing it to Kamal Bell. They're doing it to. They're doing it to Will Anderson. They're, they're like it, it's just so many people are doing it to. So we're gonna start a little campaign against Teespring. We should get shirts made. We should get shirts made. Um, so go to, if you want our anywhere. t-shirts, go to Redbubble, uh, go to the James Fosdyke um, um, page on there. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we are also sponsored uh, by Talkspace. Now, it's an online therapy company. It lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. All you need is a computer, the internet connection, and then, you know, or you can go to and a, uh, Talkspace and, app. They and an something app you need to talk about. Right. Um, means you can improve your mental health. Sure. Uh, so... Like an example is like say say you're a guy who uh, sure you've I'll, had a, I'll, I'll see where this goes. What do you mean? Well, I mean this is quite a a leap from yeah, but I, I'm just I'm interested to see where you're taking this. Um, say you know you fired one of your close friends. Sure. I'm trying to think of all the stuff that happened this week because there's so much shit. Well, I think the big one was 
What? Let's say, all right, Dave, say you're a guy who in a meeting where people who keep records are calls other nations that aren't full of white people shitholes. Oh. And a lot of people think, hey, that's super racist because you were like, no, we should just have the Dutch come in instead. But say I'm a guy who doesn't care if you think I'm racist. <laughs> Well, that's a guy that should Good talk to talk. Off. That's a guy who talks Talkspace.com. Therapy is as easy as sending your therapist a message. Get something off your chest, whatever you need to do. Uh, you talk about everyday challenges. Uh, you've gone to a lot of therapy. You could probably talk about it for hours, but you can just chat about life. I'm ready to do it now do. if that's what you're asking. Uh, so now with Talkspace, you don't have to leave your house. Uh, you don't have to leave your office. You can just do it right there. And there's no judgments, which you are very judgmental. Remember. Yeah, I don't. I don't like problems. Therapy isn't about just venting your innermost thoughts or digging into your childhood memories. It's also about practical everyday strategies for stress management and living a happier life. Uh, the Talkspace platform platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life challenges we all face. Uh, to match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com slash dollop and use the code dollop to get $30 off your first month and show your support Talkspace should do it show. like... Uh, like dating apps do, like Tinder does. When you match, you can match with a therapist, and it's like you have a match. You have a therapist. <laughs> oh, boom! Yeah, come on, Aaron, give me some. Uh, that's dollop and talkspace. Uh, Talkspace.com slash dollop. Yeah, that I don't. Huh. I don't know how my wife would feel about that. She's a therapist. Uh, we also uh, <clears throat> we use uh, Squarespace as our uh, as our site. I use it for my. Um, my personal website, DaveAnthony.com. Same we here. Use it for our sources, you use it for your. Yes, I do, Gareth, David. Uh, yes, I do. Gareth website. Um, that's right. It's super easy. Uh, I, that's why we, we three, all three, is it? He uses Garecore, obviously, over there. Obviously. Uh, it's a super easy thing. They got a bunch of great templates. Um, it's super easy to work with and write on, uh, and it's you know not that expensive. It's a nice, it's totally affordable. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like I said, beautiful templates. Uh, they have e-commerce beautiful. functionality. So if you want to sell beautiful stuff, you templates. can do that on there. Um, it look feels it's great. Uh, everything's optimized. You know, right no. out of the box. You are suggesting that that Squarespace feels right. I'm saying it feels like super hot. Okay. Uh, it's free and secure hosting. Uh, nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Twenty four seven customer support. So, uh, with Squarespace. Oh, look, they got a whole thing here. Think it, dream it, make it with Squarespace. Wait a minute. Hold wait, on, wait. Let's one. let's Daft Punk that. You know that. Uh, Destiny's Calling. It says you need to need a new website. Make it with Squarespace. The future is coming. Make it brighter. No, I like the one that sounded like Daft Punk did it. What about- Think it, feel it, make it, do it, have it, <laughs> go for it, b- put it, upload. <laughs> hour after hour, Squarespace work is never over. <clears throat> All right, so head to head to uh, squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code DOLLOP to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, enter code DOLLOP. That's uh, the name of our podcast. D-O-L-L-O. Now, Gareth and I got a new sponsor. It's Fit Fit. Fab Fit Fun, and what it is is uh, they they sent us the thing and they're like, so it's a box of uh, uh, makeup and it, like it's all kinds of stuff. Um, no, but it like seemed a... it seemed very geared towards uh, ladies, and uh, and I was like, I, I was like, do you want, do you guys want us to try this stuff? <laughs> Out. Well, it's kind of like, like a telltale mascara. heart where it's just like it's sitting in the room and you're just like, I don't need this stuff. And then it's... eventually you've got a little poncho on and you're putting on eyeliner. <laughs> you're just like, look, I'm a lady and I do what I like. So what happened in my house is they sent us a sample box. Uh, so w- what it is, is it's a it's a company. They put together a, a bunch of like cool stuff in a box and then you get it sent to you. Uh, it's like fine size products of makeup and uh, other stuff. Uh, there's they're, also and they're a, real uh, products. It's not muscle like, soak. There's a muscle. There's soak. a mask. Uh, it's great value. They don't repeat products. Um, not like a bandit mask, like a clay mask of some, or like a you know exfoliator. I gotta get out of here. It's good and to they see do, you guys. and they do like seasonal stuff. Uh, so you get this stuff, and I was like, "What? What am I gonna do with it?" And then my wife goes, "Is this for me?" Yeah. And I was like, "Yes, it's for you." Yeah. And I <laughs> and I'm expecting her to open up and be like, eh, blah, blah, blah. and she just starts fucking squealing and like, "Oh my god! Oh you, my god! Oh should, my god!" Okay, I'm she not picks gonna. Up things, she goes, "These are all my colors." I'm we're like, gonna... I don't even know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> you have colors. <laughs> and then she puts on this poncho thing, and she's like, "I've always wanted one." And she's like, "My around the house." I'm like, "I guess I did good here." No, my mother 
ravaged mine like a raccoon with like <laughs> like takeout just thrown straight in the garbage. She was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." She went up ape shit over the poncho. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, the poncho. So uh, so you get it, it comes four times a year. It's forty nine nine forty nine ninety nine a box. Um, it's like I said, what I what I witnessed. Uh, my wife went crazy for it, so uh, I recommend it uh, quite a bit. Um, so we just got our fun uh, fit fab fit fun box. It's hard for hard for me to say. Sure. Uh, obviously, my wife loved it. So if you want to get this, go use our code to get ten ten dollars off your first box. Try fab fit fun today. Go to fabfitfun.com to subscribe and start getting the box for a life well lived. Sure. Use promo code Dollop to get ten dollars off your first box. Uh, this product's valued at two hundred dollars for only thirty nine ninety nine, which seems like a deal. Again, go to fabfitfun.com and use code Dollop to get ten dollars off your first box. Boom. There's a lot of squealing in my house when that when I was when that stuff was. The rats. <sighs> there are a lot of rats. <laughs> was it the rats again, Dave? <laughs> we have a lot of rats in our house. We <laughs> we um, I'm, what I'm suggesting is you get a rat terrier. <laughs> uh, so we ship rat terriers. Go to ratterrier.com. You know, not a lot of podcasts are giving you beasts to fight off uh, household vermin. But uh, the dollop <laughs> is uh, blazing a trail. Um, so uh, anything else? Do we have anything else to tell people? I think we've said enough. We have a book for sale. Whatever. You guys can find all that stuff. Yeah. Keep those book checks going. February 11th, 1907. Okay. Wooga. What? Yeah, I didn't know Wooga. What? William Levitt okay. was born in Brooklyn, New York. His father was Abraham Levitt. Uh, he was uh, from England, Abraham originally, uh, but uh, raised over here in the U.S. He was a real estate investor, and he dabbled a bit. Uh, oh, he was a real estate lawyer and dabbled a bit in, in, in real estate He investing. represented houses. He represented houses. He's yeah. like, sir, your honor, my client's a two-story home. Okay. I rest. Uh, sir, are, uh, I got to figure out how to do my job better. Well, there's no, there's no actually case against your house. I know, that's part of the big problem here. <laughs> how are you getting paid? Well, the house. I don't know actually. Okay, so you're bad at all this. <laughs> I'm, I'm sixty years old. <laughs> yeah. My Guilty. Life, my life is. Guilty. What a waste. William had one uh, younger brother, Alfred. He was uh, like five years younger. Uh, uh, William attended school in New York and then went uh, on to go to New York University. In 1929, his father, Abraham, started a uh, real estate uh, development sure. company. He called it Levitt and Sons. Catchy. So it also makes you think that maybe the Sons are How about Levitt or Levitt? Why didn't he go with that? Boom. That's already way better. a thing. Well, wasn't then. Um, obviously, his sons were supposed to be involved in the business. The Great Depression forced a proper, so they're doing this deal to develop property, and then the Great Depression hits, which I guess a lot of people, it was a bummer. I, do you think by putting <laughs> great on it, we've sort of s sullied how shitty it really was? Because to me, that's, that's just weird I to mean, put maybe great on something that's that it terrible. Should, it should be called the, the fucking shittiest the, depression. The shitty depression. The, the worst depression. The worst depression. Then if you tell people we're headed for another worst depression, I think people maybe, you know, yeah. this the small sect of the population might be like, oh, that's bad. I think they weren't really thinking about names back the then. The fantastic though. depression. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, so it forced this property developer they were working with to default on payments, and then Abraham Levitt had to step in and complete the job himself to protect his investment. Okay. So he has no experience with the construction, so he calls on his sons, who were in college, to help. Both dropped out of college, joined up, and went to work. Okay. The upscale development was called Strathmore. Sure. They had a policy to not to sell to Jews. Okay. Okay, sure. So, okay, good. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes it's uh, the podcast is a little bit like finding truffles. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got to dig for a little while. Other times they're just sitting right in front of you. Sometimes they come right at you. Yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes truffles aren't you. Um. Uh. So. Uh. So they. they so, so their policy was to not rent to Jews. Right. Here's right. um. Here, and we're here we're is, in America. There's the uh, there's the boys and their dad. Um, oh boy. We are yeah. in we're in the New York area. Okay. So well, this, the one on the right there, the one with the glasses, definitely looks like he's got a no Jew policy. That's Alfred. That's Alfred. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're Jewish. Hmm. 
Did I not mention that? I think they're that's Jews the who I decided for that. business reasons to not no, sell to, to Jews. Their... You guys get it, right? The anti-Semitic Jew, I thought, was just a it's trope of stand-up anti- comedy. It's not even anti-Semitic. No. It, to them, it's just strictly a business decision. Oh boy, this is like... And the other Jews are probably like, well, I get it. Yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's sort of like this weird... Like... <laughs> well, I make money, I yeah. get it. That's anti-Semitic. <laughs> We're Jews. Okay. Um, and it worked. Okay. Strathmore uh, was such a success that Levitt and Sons purchased more Long Island farmland and built more homes throughout the Depression. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and and it was good for farmers too at the time because of the golden uh, nematode, which you. Uh, oh, the golden nematode. The golden eelworm, also. Yeah, and the also golden eelworm, the yellow potato cyst. Well, those. The, let me uh, let me. N- nematode. Yeah. Go ahead, but uh, well, you finish your thought, and then I'll jump in as far as my thought on all those things. Well, it's ravaging the potato crops, obviously. Obviously. Uh, and so farmers are just looking to sell because yeah. they're they're losing everything. And th- exactly. The. the well, and that was a big golden part of it. Worm. And that was a big part of it was the golden eel worm. Yeah. <sighs> so wait, what's going on? <laughs> uh, so it's a per- it's basically a perfect time to buy land and, and but be- because it. farmers' crops are just getting eaten just getting, by to getting wasted by this this fucking golden eel. eel? Golden. Uh, you can call it the golden uh, nematode or uh, one golden of these is a Bond worm. movie. Is this where I'm supposed to pick which one's a Bond yep, movie? Yep. I think the golden eel's the Bond yes! movie. I knew it. Whammy. So the, uh, um, so they have this. Like I said, no, no Jewish policy it doesn't affect them at all. They sell like crazy. It's it's a great deal. Okay, and um, then they're buying up this land that used to be farmland to yeah, build okay. potato land. Right. As the as the Levitt's built, they got better and better at it, more and more efficient. They built mostly upscale houses around Long Island, and then in the 1930s, William became the company president, while his younger brother Alfred designed the homes. Okay. All right. Sure. So you see the guys there. Yeah. Dad, smi- Dad, a constant, <laughs> constant happiness. There's William. Did I give you William over there? Yeah. There's William. Yeah. William. Yeah. Down in front of him was one of his maps. I love maps. You can see right there he's working. Yeah. Clearly, that doesn't look staged at all. William. Uh, so William's the president. Alfred's the like designer. Then World War II came, and Levin Sons won a Navy contract to build cheap homes for shipyard workers in Virginia. Okay. Um, they figured out the non-art of mass production techniques. Okay. <laughs> the war also led William to enlist in the Navy in 1943. So William goes to war. Th- that one is William. Yeah. Okay. That guy right there. Right. Okay. He's the main guy. Right. He'll be he's the our, main guy. He's our, right. Yeah, in, in 1944, the GI Bill of Rights was passed. It was designed to reabsorb millions of returning vets at a time when housing is in short supply. So you know, all these guys come back from war. Right. You got not enough houses for people. Right. It's a total shit show. Uh, the bill gave veterans and small uh, 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 small business loans, right? So you're a vet, you get a small business loan, you can get college tuition, job training, hiring privileges, unemployment payments, and low interest mortgages. Okay. So housing construction goes bananas. Sure. Right, totally through the roof. From uh, 114,000 new homes in 1944 to 1.7 million new homes in 1950. So wow. that's a pretty big increase. Yeah, okay. I, if, if I'm doing math, it's like 8%. Yeah, something close to that. Um, this is obviously very exciting, uh, unless you're uh, a black guy. Right. Um, because of the GI's first 67,000 mortgages, fewer than 100, were taken up by non-whites. And that's not because they didn't want them. Right. It's because they just weren't being offered. No, we just want to see how this goes. Oh, did we not? Oh, we should have called it the white GI Bill. But basically, all these guys went and fought for our country, black guys, coming back thinking, well, we fought for the country, so now we get to be a part of the dream. And then it was just a door slammed in their face. Right. And then there's just there's 100 that they get. So they have lottery odds of getting a home. It's bad. Right. So when William came back, he had picked up um, in his time in the Navy uh, cheaper and faster ways to build. Um, okay. So they must have put him to work. Over if you there. hold a gun at an employee's head, he moved. <laughs> they really work hard, guys. Uh, so um, so they're building. Um, he realized they can crank it out fast if they do it the way that he learned. So there's there's thousands of new married couples looking for an affordable place to live. Okay. Um, William realized if they built a ton of identical homes, all with the newest appliances, they could sell them cheap. It was to be the first planned community in America. It's the first suburb. Right. Wow. Oh, my God. They called it Levittown, New York. What did they do? What? It's fine. They called it Levittown, New York. They used Henry Ford's Detroit assembly line approach. Oh, man. 
What a, yeah. Teams of workers put up identical houses like they were working in a factory. They were able to build 36 houses a day. Jesus Christ. There's no basements, no garages, and nothing to tell the houses apart. They used pre-cut lumber, and they were built on concrete slabs. Okay. They had to have the building codes changed um, because most places didn't allow you to build on concrete slabs, but then there was such a need for houses. They're like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, do it on the slab. They wouldn't allow you to build on concrete slabs? No, I think it um, makes for a less stable house. A slab does? Yeah. Okay, what do I know? I think of it, I think if, Aaron, I have, no, I have absolutely no idea, but I think if you build it on the ground and you put, you know, you put beams into the ground or whatever right. you do, you're going to have more flexible sort of situation. But if you just build on a slab, you're talking about cracking, you're talking about, right. you know. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Um, and then it doesn't give as much with the land as it settles or whatever. I would imagine that's it. I could I'll be call totally, my brother after this. We'll get I could clarity. totally be totally wrong. Yeah, you call your brother. Yeah. Now. <laughs> That would be um, amazing. I could. I'm trying to find this construction picture, which I can't. The find one that now. is it the one that says construction? No, it's not that one. It's this one. Okay, so that's what they look like. So there's guys putting together a house. So they literally are. You it can looks see, like they're putting together about to do a musical. Like okay, so, while they're building the house, they put down the slab, and then they've got wood around it, and then they've got uh, they've got kitchen shit. They've got it the, looks even like the white the, picket fence is sitting right there, ready to get put up. Refrigerator, stove, like it's right. all there. Like they just bring it in all at once. Right, it's and now build like, in a fucking day. Yeah, it's very like when I first moved to L.A. Like the easiest place to rent was just this place that was mo like, you know, that exact same yeah, thing. It's They're all the same. The walls are thin as shit. Yeah. They give you everything. You're like, oh, that'll be easy. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> so they basically cut out the middleman. They're using non-union labor, which brought picket lines. Uh, and then they're buying directly from manufacturers. Uh, they're buying everything. In right. House, you know, TV, free, whatever is in there. Right. Um, people wanted them. Uh, first they rented, then they sold. The price was for a house $6,990 mm. for a fully furnished home. Mm. All oh, the, yummy. All the buyer needed was a $90 deposit. Oh, my God. And payments of <laughs> I'll take 30. $58 a month. Oh, my God. Wow. Most Leviton homes were bought uh, by returning But honey, it's pretty steep. It's $90. <laughs> How are we going to afford this? Honey, come on. I just feel like in two <clears> years <throat> we're going to be kicking ourselves. Um, so it's mostly done by, mostly bought by young GIs coming back. Sure. Not black ones. No. The, f the morning the first homes went up for rent, 1,500 families lined up outside uh, the place. Look at this. So there's a big line of people waiting. To buy the places? They're all, those are people lined up waiting to buy a house. Wow, that's on really the first day. weird. Um, well, they're renting to own. That's basically what it is. Uh, they fill out an application. Uh, some camped overnight, and they worried the houses would be gone in the morning. There's like 1,500 houses. So they line up for them. Right. Levittown was on uh, top of every little detail. Residents, who were sometimes called Levittowners. Oh, God. Were at first expected to comply with a lengthy list of rules about the upkeep of their homes and how they use their property. Interesting. Uh, one rule was that they couldn't hang laundry out to dry on Sunday. Oh, well, that one makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, right? <laughs> what? Is this, I mean, if it's related to God. It has to be. Why else the, would it? You did, can't see someone. How do we get away with these God connections? Hold on. But you, you can't. You hold on. You can't. It's totally reasonable on the, on the day of the day of the week of our Lord where we celebrate him that you don't see where you, a, a piece of clothing where you keep your junk so your vaginas we talked to God again today he is not happy he um, again has another bizarre request uh -huh. um, we understand he's made some very strange ones like okay. wine is his blood and yep. crackers his body yes, and he sir, wanted like you guys to eat and drink him mm -hmm. um, he now is against when you guys Put your clothes out on Sunday, cause I'm that sorry? is, cause well, it's his day, uh huh, and he just doesn't like any of that stuff. He doesn't like chores on his day, but especially not uh, the chore, you know, especially not getting clothes. Okay, Clo so the, uh, think if you're him, yeah, clothes on a line on a Sunday. It doesn't mean anything. Well, um, I think it, to most people, it's pretty clear. That would be CNN back in that time. You'd have the pro and con. You know, you, uh, you know, you should be able to hang up your clothes on Sunday. I, I think that Jesus is upset by it. Well, we've heard uh, interesting debates from both sides. I guess we'll never know if Jesus wants your clothes up or not. 
Um, they're also not allowed to fence in their yards. There's a fence out there. <clears throat> uh, well, at first, they. What do you mean? There was a fence in that other picture you put up. Oh well, uh, that's at first. Th- that okay. might have been taken later, but okay. um, they couldn't fence in their yards at first. Uh, if you didn't take care of your lawn, you'd get a bill. They said uh, where every tree could be planted and how every bush should be trimmed. Um, mm-hmm. So it's hardline conformity, which also included people. Mm-hmm. William promised homeowners uh, a quote escape from the claustrophobia of city life. Okay, AKA black people. Oh, boy, yeah, of course. <clears throat> so here we go. So the man is now creating the first suburb, and he's already segregating. Oh yeah, it's a suburb. Come on. There'll be so few black people, you won't need fences. Come on down to Levittown, <laughs> Levittowners. <laughs> what? Racist. So Levitt said he wasn't uh, a racist. I. But he was making a business you decision. Can't, you can't. Uh, He's making a business uh, this decision. Parallel, good God. And he wasn't concerned with making the world a better place, just making money. He yeah. said that. Like he's not. He's like, I'm not about making the world better. I'm about making money. <clears throat> A quote, if we but sell it, one I, house to a Negro family, 90 to 95 percent of our white customers would not buy into the community. It's business, son. It's so weird that it. How is it we live in a time where that sounds familiar, <clears throat> like to our time? Uh, yeah, now. I mean, you know, because everything's great. Uh, this also helped. I'm not racist, but. Never, he, never goes right. Uh, he also said this would help the homeowners retain the value of their property. Sure, because <clears throat> you know, if black people live in a house, then it's a, it's a right worse. Sure, I think for that's sure. what he's saying. No, cool. A few black families could take down the whole development. Oh my God, take down! <laughs> like if properly placed, <laughs> if properly placed, every nine houses you put a black family, well, then the whole thing's a wash. Well, we've got to be very, very careful here. And by wash, we don't mean what we're doing on Sundays. Praise Jesus. William explained they couldn't both tackle segregation and the housing crisis at the same time. Mm-hmm. How could we do that? No, yeah. I, How yeah, could that possibly be a... Well, that's why when you say... Wait, you mean it's actually the best time to tackle it? Wait I, a minute. I know. It's like when he's <clears throat> saying, like, look, I'm a businessman. It's like, yeah, but you also, with this move, yeah. simply could make it better. But instead, you're, you're like, no, 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 we'll go with what people think. You're literally reconstructing how America is built. Yeah. This would be exactly... The time we're to talking s- about a city on a hill, no black people. No. All right, guys, let's get in these houses. It's like this is when you integrate, yeah. Um, but he was hopeful that someday, it yeah, would be as different. far as like white people goes, this would be like sneaking vegetables into the cookies. You yeah. could easily, right now, just sort of be like, and this is what's normal now, and people yeah. would be like, oh, houses, oh, okay, yeah. Sorry. Um, so he's he's hopeful that someday it'll be different. Quote, as a Jew, I have no room in my heart for racial prejudice. But the plain fact is that most whites prefer not to live in mixed communities. This may attitude may be morally wrong, and it someday may change. I hope it will. He's, so, he's walking. He's on the razor's edge. So stuff like that's like the, that's like the standard sort of right family and house. Um, okay. White white people, small house. You yep. know, family of three or family of four or five. Two point five. Two point five. Yeah. Um, at the time, it was legal to not sell or rent to minorities. Of course. The Federal Housing Administration actually offered mortgages to non-mixed developments, which encouraged developers to create white-only communities. Oh, wow. Language so was... What, what is their plan? Oh, never mind. That's <clears throat> there's a no, dumb question. You know what the fucking plan is. Yeah, yeah. Um, language was put into the housing contracts that the homes could not be, quote, be used or occupied by any person other than members of the Caucasian race. So that's in the contract to buy the house. <laughs> in the contract, which is normal. What year are we in now? Um, this is uh, like the late 40s. Oh, my God. Mid- mid-ish 40s. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> but someone did sue over white-only developments. And what? It, it went to the Supreme Court. Okay. Who? <laughs> what did they do? Surprisingly. What, let me, wait, let me guess. <clears throat> They sought justice. I mean, they actually did. Did they? Shockingly. They disagreed, ruling such restrictions uh, were to be unenforceable as law and contrary to public policy. So they say you can't do that. You can't just say You can't have a Caucasian contract. William Levitt had the language removed from the contracts, but the white-only policy continued. Oh, that's fine. We'll take it out. We'll just keep doing it. Thank you. Instead, they used dog whistles. Uh... 
in the Levitan message. It was called, quote, a private haven in a heartless world. A white picket fence. A place where parents wouldn't have to worry about their Worry. Kids. They're bolded. There's a lot of winking. Yeah. 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 Well, that's when we came up with our spokesperson, White Winkman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's always tipping his hat to something. It's never dark out at Levittown. White Winkman. <laughs> you won't need to lock your doors when it's dark. White Winkman. Ding. Um, so, you know, the houses are you've seen you've seen these kind of places. They just all look the fucking same. Yeah. I mean, that's all America is now, really. No, I'm I, it's weird because well, uh, yeah, like this, it feels like it's really become that in like the last like 10 years, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the weird thing is to look at it from above. Oh, Jesus. Well, that is like the thing that's so crazy when you fly, when you fly in general, but when you fly into LA and you're just like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, it just stacked. looks crazy. Um, so, Jesus. Uh, as I said, the houses sold fast. 1,400 families moved into the all white Levittown within the first three hours of the office opening its doors. They were renting with an option to buy. The company kept building and soon had made over 17,000 homes. I mean, if you're making 36 homes a day, that's not hard if you have the fucking land. It's still crazy. Levittown was so successful. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's like, it looks like factory farming. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it really does. Uh, Levittown was so successful that William Levitt was put on the cover of Time magazine in July 1950. Anti-Semitic, Jew, <laughs> racist, Bucks trend. <laughs> Is that fucking the trend, though? No. <laughs> it's just like, oh, Jew finds out how to move white people out of the city. Jew sticks to racist values, blames business, and bad Jews. Uh, they went on to build other Levitowns in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, and Maryland. The Puerto and Rico all... one just is so weird to me, but yeah, I guess so. Well, you yeah. know. I mean, Puerto Rico actually has a pretty large uh, Caucasian population. Yeah. Uh, Levittown, uh, so they had- uh, Not enough in this day and age to uh, help. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. For a time. Uh, we're, we cut you guys loose. I don't know if you know that. Uh, so Levittown has a public elementary schools, uh, Olympic-sized pools. There's parks. There's baseball fields. There's playgrounds. There's shopping so they, centers. So, like it's, right, it's, a, it's, right. an, it's a suburb. They built a suburb. Right. Right. They built a place you never have to leave. That's exactly right. Uh, this is white flight. This is people running from the cities. Right. Um, by the time the last Levitt and Sons house was purchased in 1951, they had earned the distinction of having completed the largest housing development ever constructed by a single builder. As they built more and more, they started building what they called ranches, which had a carport and a TV built into the staircase. Um, Wait. So they're... Yeah, so you know the staircase goes up, well yeah. then underneath. Oh, they you know where you would uh, in a horror movie you would lock up a child. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> you could have just you, said where Harry Potter it's goes. It's where you have a caged human in a horror movie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the best way I can describe uh, it. Dave, can we, Aaron? Let's. Just I'm take sorry. A break. Where is the? Does it come with a caged child? Dave, let's talk about. How it. does? How does the staircase Dave, work? Let's talk about. Can you take the TV out and there's a hole and you put the bars in and that's where you keep the people you capture? Oh, eat? we don't need the TV plugged in. It's just to dupe them uh, in there before I change the wall. What we don't need is black people. <laughs> okay. It's just where Harry Potter goes, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a uh, magazine was made. You know where you torture people in your house if you can. <laughs> So a magazine is created. Um, oh, what? I don't. I didn't. I didn't write down the name. I don't know why. It's oh something God. I usually do. But it was just simply, it was just a magazine for how to expand and remodel and decorate Levitt homes. Okay. So there's so many fucking homes and yeah. so many people trying to probably make them slightly different than their neighbors. Right. That they're actually putting out a magazine telling people. Oh, that's how to that's do also this. kind of genius in a way too, though, to sell everything the exact same and then be like, "Want to make yours stand out?" Yeah, it's totally. It's like fucking IKEA. Yeah, really. There, yeah, there it's are the IKEA. If, if you of home. go on yeah. a website, there are IKEA mods. Uh, um, uh, if you, um, website, the internet. If you put in IKEA mods, there's all these people doing stuff to make your IKEA thing look different. How long until IKEA just makes a home kit? I don't know. We're all gonna die. <laughs> I mean, true. Eventually, mobile like being able to break your home down like a Lego hut. <laughs> Probably going to be pretty advantageous. And move it? Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. They well, we're have... flooding. All right, kids, let's move the let's home. Go. 
Come on, guys. Who wants, to, who wants to live in Bakersfield? Like we practice. Well, yeah, even think of like what happened in Hawaii yesterday when they were told there was an imminent missile headed towards them. Like you that got in fine. a little IKEA pack home. All right, fine. guys, collapse the home. Get your backpacks. I would. I would take thirty-eight minutes to send out the reverse message saying there weren't. You would take thirty-eight minutes unless, you know, you're trying to sell ballistic missile defense. Uh, System. Never mind. Um, Apparently, it was uh, again, a very exciting tourist destination as well. That was a that was a white winkman if I've ever seen one. The July 1950 issue of the NASA Daily Review Star reported that Levittown's frame has spread so widely, fame. Sorry, quote Levittown's fame has spread so widely both in America and abroad that it now ranks near the Statue of Liberty among the seven wonders which New York City visitors want to see. The the so, the, the suburb <laughs> over the Statue of Liberty. So people, dude. So with a check in the mail, well, the check was in the mail for our demise for ages. <laughs> It just fell behind the couch or something. People would come to New York City and they'd be like, man, this is beautiful. I saw that that big building you got. I saw the statue lady. What about all these homes that look the same? Where's that cul-de-sac at? Weck, can I just see the street you drive down and everything looks exactly the same, including the people? Do you have that? Because I want to feel like I'm in some sort of crazy twilight zone. In the movie business, I believe they call it the B-roll city. Is that around here? William Levitt was now one of the richest people in the world. Well, good people get rewards. William had a huge ego. What, from what? He lived lavishly, if you can imagine. I bet um, it. He. Uh, what is that, a selfie? That is him uh, uh, out on his boat. Is that the picture of him, or is that his boat in the background? That's him on a boat. That might be his boat in the background as well. He might have a big yacht. Oh, he might I'm have sure been he like... Did. A foreground uh, shot. Um, but it's him and his lady. This was a story about how awesome their lives were. Um, he bragged he hated all exercise except for golf and would only read newspapers and magazines. No <laughs> books. Oh, boy. Oh. He leased a huge apartment on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. He had a limo and a driver. When he went to eat with a group, he would tell everyone where to sit and then order their food for them. Oh. He always had a steak. <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> Oh well, it sounds. Bobby, you it, sit there. You're okay. having uh, you're having soup and bread, just I'm plain really, bread. Okay, I'm really. Hungry Louise, though, you're having a salad, and uh, yeah, just a salad. You sit on the floor. No, I don't want to sit on uh, the floor. Tommy, William. yeah. Uh, Brett, I, can I get maybe something to eat? I I didn't eat all day because I thought maybe I'd get some food tonight. Entitlement. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have a steak, nice, juicy. Medium rare. No, let's go medium. Okay, so one salad, a soup, two breads, and a medium right. rare steak for Garcon. Yeah, can you make all of them sit on the floor? Absolutely. Get out of those chairs, assholes. Get out of those chairs. William wants you on the ground. Also, every time you bring my steak, could you put it down and wink at me and say, man, you are rich. Absolutely. Thank you. Man, you are rich. Thank you. Here's a tip. 50 cents. Perfect. My other tip is buy a Levittown house. My other tip is keep out everyone who's not pure white. In July 1957... B and Lou Weschler, a Jewish couple who lived in Levittown, so they sell the Jewish people. They snuck in. Um, they decided to sell their home. Okay. Now. Uh oh. They're not going to do something crazy like. B and Lou uh, were white radicals who were friendly with a lot of communists. Okay. They believed the whites only Levittown uh, policy was not cool and that racial equality was a. Necessary part of American life. What, what, how did they sneak into Levittown with these open-minded values? Uh, I think that some people did. They have to dig a hole to get under the fence. I I, I bet some people moved there and then were kind of shocked at what, how, because this is much less segregated than a lot of other places. Like right. this is like it's the the extreme example. Um, but I bet they were, or they lived there for a little while and got radicalized, or their plan was to buy and do this. It'd be great to go there, and just the first thing you do is convert to Judaism. <laughs> Right away. Um, so, what did they do? Well, William Myers was born in New York and raised in Pennsylvania. Myers enlisted uh, during the war, and he served two and a half years fighting for his country. Okay. When he came home, he used the GI Bill to go to college. After, he met and married Daisy, and they started a family. Okay. A few years later, he was working as an engineer in a refrigeration test laboratory. Yeah, this was called? In New Jersey. This is also called? 
Daisy had a This big... isn't as cold. <laughs> Daisy, I don't know if you know what engineers do. Super cold again. <laughs> well, I think colder than the first two. I think what you're talking about is maybe a guy that you would... I'm picturing a guy working in a fridge factory. Yeah, no, but you're you literally not even a fridge factory. Because a guy at a fridge factory would make fridges. You literally, I mean, <laughs> no, your mind the test, hired the test a guy floor. who tests whether it's cold. Yeah, they're on the test floor. So he just walks in, as yeah. opposed to having a temperature no, gauge. No, no, dude, he's opening a bunch of different like cold okay. things. Yep. Oh, this is very cold. Yeah. <laughs> so I we're learning why you should never have a company. Gearcore is thriving. Do we not have a Gearcore cold tester guy? <laughs> I'm him. <laughs> Oh, this is freezing. <laughs> this is very cold. <laughs> this. <laughs> so Daisy has a degree in education. She's a she's a, 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 a he's educated. She's educated. He okay. fought for his country. They're sort of the good people. They're, well, they're the typical sort of American couple at this age. They sure. just happen to be black. Sure. Oh, OK. Right. So the Weschlers sold their house to the Myers. OK. Um, they're not radicals. They're not political. They're just. Uh, a black family who wanted a nice life. They had two kids. Are She's they, pregnant with a third. Are they, they aware of the... Uh, no. Okay. Right. Bill had seen the news about the promise of life in Levittown, America's first suburb. Uh, it meant having a community and a sense of security. And for the Myers, it meant moving into a new America. Right. The house was three bedrooms and had a two-car garage. It was a corner lot. For the first two days, Bill and Daisy came and cleaned up the house. Okay. So what does that look like if you're a white guy who lives next door? Uh, black, black people come in and clean up the house. What's that look like? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Right. They think they're cleaners. Oh, my God. So they're just like... On the third day... Hey, do you guys do all the houses around here? <laughs> On the third... uh, the honey, they're funny. They said they're moving here. <laughs> On the third day, August 13th, they moved in. Uh, they were hey, the- these cleaners seem to be furnishers, too. These are very bold cleaners. The, I like these. are arrangers and cleaners. They were the first black family to move in since Levittown had opened 10 years before. Okay. When the mailman came, I should say this is the Pennsylvania Levittown, right? Not you the, did not, not the original. It. Okay, so this is the Pennsylvania Levittown, okay. which was built around the same time. Okay. So the mailman comes, and he knocks on the door, and Daisy answers, and he asks to speak to the owner. <sighs> Hi, uh, miss. What are you? <laughs> he thought she was the maid. Oh, my God. Daisy said, I am the owner. And the mailman said, quote, you? You're the owner? That's right. He handed her a letter and walked off like he'd been punched in the face. Oh, my God. Daisy said to Bill, quote, he looked ill. The mailman then went door to door, speaking like a racist Paul Revere. Quote, it happened. Niggers have moved to Levittown. Oh, shit. He went and said that at every house that he went to. Oh, my God. So there they are. Look like a nice couple. God, it really is like, uh, it's so, I, I, yeah, that's just fucking crazy. Within 15 minutes of the mailman coming to the house, small groups of people started gathering on the lawn of the house across the street. Oh, my God. So now people are just showing up because black up. people have moved in they're just so irate uh that they're now just like gathering well, to be like you can't live here i think it's part irate oh are they more fascinated i think that they're yeah i think that they're like well i'm sure some are irate but i think a lot are just like what, what? is going what could possibly be happening? did you hear okay those crowds start to gather wow yeah, that's right. how you that's how you make that's how you make people feel comfortable yeah, so they're just- And there's just, a crowd outside because we're black, hon. They're just in little groups, yeah. and they're kind of, you know, in different areas watching this corner lot. Whoa. It's a corner lot. Imagine, dude. It's- um, Whoa. So then the phone rang, and Daisy answered it, and it was a hysterical woman screaming. I don't want to freak you out, but black people have moved into the neighborhood. Oh, God. Quote. I will not let my children drink chocolate milk again as long as I live. Then she hung up. Okay, so let's so, just, okay, now let's say so, that to so. your core, no, Dave, <laughs> let's say to your core, you feel because of the race of someone, you you can't have your kids do something. Yeah. I think with a little more thought, you could come up with something better than what 
what I would say was a uh, uh, a, a an terrible, opening salvo, a, a terrible, terrible, uh, clearly racist, but not creative jab. I won't let my kids drink chocolate milk. I mean, it's like she didn't want to be super what? racist, but she wanted to be racist. Right. Like she's maybe a church going lady and that's the best she can come I'd up with. I'd love to see the list of the other three she had on there <laughs> before she went with that. Daisy asked Bill if they if he thought there would be any trouble, and he assured her there was nothing to worry about. The Weschler's phone rang shortly after. Where are they now? Now they've moved somewhere else. They okay. moved nearby, okay. but they're it was one of their old neighbors. Did they did they know that Yes. It'll be see. So they're doing this as a the radical move to like sort of yeah. Uh, they they've gone disrupt in a so the one way. there's this weird disconnect thing where they've gone as far as to contact certain people to tell them this is happening and they've contacted and a lawyer has sent a letter to the Leviton offices and the police department right like a people in authority positions have been warned by the Weschlers and others. The people who don't seem to know. Are the, are the other, Myers right. the people moving in? Right, right. So there's that's a thing, cool. There's a thing happening there. That's oh, you're on a reality show. <laughs> 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 so uh, the Weschler's phone rings. It's one of their old neighbors. He just screams, "You nigger loving Jewish motherfuckers!" This would be the first of one of many calls to Weschler's house. So people who live there makes you miss the chocolate milk are call. Livid that this Jewish couple who are pretty sold, fucking radical sold to a sold to a black, black couple. like they right. the betrayal. Right. We let you Jews move in and we bit our tongues, but then you <laughs> Jews sold the blacks. Not in Levittown, baby. In the afternoon, the Levittown Times newspaper came out. On page two near the bottom was a short- Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was a short story titled, Oh, my God. 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 That's what's written in it by Jane Sussman. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. okay. Oh, my okay. God. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> okay. 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 Oh my, okay. Okay. Remember the West- Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Quote, the first Negro family to buy a Levittown home. And then it briefly describes them, reports they moved in to 43 Deep Green Lane in the Dogwood Hollow section that morning. It said the family was made up of William Myers, his wife, Daisy, and their three small children. Although it's not three small, it's two and she's pregnant. Well, it's still <sighs> small. It's just um, inside. Cars start driving by. So what? It, so then, when she reads in the Levittown paper that they're featured as the first Negro oh, she family. hasn't read it because she's not getting the paper yet. They just moved in. Right. Okay. They have no idea. Okay. Cars start driving by. Oh boy. Uh, two two hours. There's so many cars that there's now a traffic jam in front of the house. Oh my god. Quite a few cars start displaying Confederate flags. Oh boy. Because okay. it's Pennsylvania, the side that fought against. <laughs> By 7.30 p.m., reporters started showing up. They took pictures and interviewed people who are now milling about. What do you think about this black thing? <laughs> well, everybody's still totally freaked out here on the ground, Diane. Back to you guys. I mean, I'll put up a um, YouTube. Uh, there's a documentary. Of, like, I, it's, it's not even a documentary. It's just a guy sort of exploring the mindsets. He's just asking people questions. And you just can't believe, like, like there's a normal person who's like, yeah, it's fine. You know, they moved here. It's blah, blah, blah. And then there's a guy that's like, I have four children. What are they going to do? And you're like, what's happening right now? In, in <laughs> shot uh, around this time? This time. time exact wow. same, exact time. It's an amazing. I watched oh. the whole thing. I was just, like, staring at these people. Um, so then a drunk man comes to the door. And this is their first night. Comes to their house. And demands to know who had sold them the house. Quote, how much did you pay for it? What right do you have to come? I just want to find the people who sold it. Just tell me what their names are. Bill tells him to check the, check the public record, which the drunk guy then shouted to the crowd that they should check the public record. And someone yelled, quote, something is going to happen. I'm sticking around to see. So that guy's just excited about the potential coming violence. Yeah. There's that guy who's like, man, there's going to be something good right now. Come on. Yeah. He hears the public record news. He's like, no, oh, come on. That's going to take a long time, and we're drunk. So the Myers are definitely thinking this was now going to be a problem. Sure. The crowd is now big and very angry. Oh, my 
God. <laughs> Oh my God! So what do you now? That's just a photo of the people. I think after they've been moved across the street, but they're on their lawn. They're they're not staying in an area. Talk they are everywhere surrounding the house. Feeling like a fucking alien. Like oh fuck yeah! Can you even imagine? I mean, I can't even imagine. What do you so, what? So like, it's literally if you if this picture that I put up, it's 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 a street, and then across the street there are just. A hundred white people. No, yeah, it looking, looks like people looking. waiting for like the Beatles, like to come out. <laughs> Except it's not. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, women were swearing and spitting. Men were angrily grumbling. Um, many said they had come here because William Levitt promoted it as a whites-only community. Some shouted, "Quote, Levitt promised." Oh my God! Like little babies. He said we wouldn't get this. What are you? Uh. Someone shouted, quote, no one wants them here. Let's drive them out. The Myers next door uh, neighbors who were totally 100 percent fine with them living there. They came out and tried to calm down the crowd. <laughs> the neighbor told them that the Myers had the same right to buy a house as anyone else here does. And then an angry man stepped up and got in his face. You should be ashamed of yourself. Our houses are worth only half of what they were yesterday. Oh my God! Now what? Who apparently, is this? Appa- I didn't. Apparently, there was an appraisal. <laughs> Who appraised this? <laughs> the clan. Well, this house looks all good. Now, who's living next door? Uh, 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 there's a black uh, couple. Whoa! I'm gonna cut this in half. Uh, um. Soon, the neighbor realized that his safety was at stake, and uh, a friend of his actually said, "You got to get out of here." Okay. So he retreats back to his house. Right. So even defending this situation is yeah, your life's in danger. So Bill and Daisy called the cops and plead for help. Uh, their kids are now bawling. Uh, they felt. I the mean, that conversation could very easily have just been one where they're just like, "Yes, we're calling about the Myers who have moved into a Levitt town." Like, "Oh, ma'am, we are aware of that, and we're doing everything we can to get them out of the house." No, we're the Myers. Uh-huh. Oh, um, hi. Hey. Uh. Sit, Wrong number, call back. Sit tight. <laughs> New phone, who this? You're going to be fine? Um, uh, so they, they from the conversation, they felt like the cops had no intention of coming. Um, then they heard two ma- men yelling outside they should get dynamite and blow up the house. That, yeah, that's going to bring your property values back up. <laughs> yeah. Now that they've been cut in half, I, I think mean, the appraisal is really going to enjoy the fact that some of them explode. Look, bombings are good for- um, Yeah, that's- that's that helps every that helps the local economy at minimum. Yeah. Uh, so um, then the cops actually did come and the Myers were obviously relieved. But it didn't last long as they watched out their window. The cops did nothing to disperse the crowd. Instead, they just started ticketing cars that were parked illegally. Nah. It turns out a lot of the cops lived in Levittown. Oh, God. So the Myers had had so this enough. Is li- I mean, this is like a horror film if you're the Myers. Yeah. Oh, thank God the cops are here. Well, Matt Matt Damon apparently that he did a movie this year that was about this, but downsizing. I, but they didn't make a lot of the connections that you're saying. I think it was based on this, and then they is that did, right? Yeah, I think what they wanted to do was do a movie about this, and then as they got through the production process, it became about nothing. Right. <laughs> so I haven't seen it. Um, so the Myers had had enough. They ran to their car as they held their kids. Reporters took photos. The crowd jeered at them. The crowd slowly parted as they drove through, and after they were gone, leaders started to emerge from the group. They uh. stood and gave speeches as the others listened. <sighs> the crowd was now about 250 people. So those speeches are just like, you see, if we stand together, we can keep this a white com-. Like that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, but. look, one guy I read about, he's from North Carolina, and you know why he moved here was so it would be a white-only place. Like, there's a... There's a lot of there's a lot of southern influence that you know I I felt when I was reading sure. about this. Sure. So a group of teenagers then threw rocks through the front picture window. At that point, six co- cars pulled up and 15 policemen came onto the lawn carrying clubs and the sheriff arrived. The crowd started to get more and more out of hand. Oh boy. I don't know if I have a picture of the window, do I? Large crowd. No. Nope. Looks like I didn't bring it. It was too small. It's a weird thing about when you go on on Google Photos to find photos. Some of the pictures are tiny. You're like, what? <laughs> I know. Like when you drag one, you're just like, wait, what is oh, this? Oh, look. It's, a, it's like a tiny, tiny Yeah. Picture. No, this is for a mouse's wallet. Um, so uh, 
A 45-year-old man and his wife uh, got arrested while they were uh, being put in the car. A woman yelled, quote, come on, let's everybody get arrested. Let's make a big thing out of this. What is like mobs just can't hang out for too long. It's just ridiculous. Uh, otherwise, it's loudest idea wins. <laughs> the three teenagers who threw the rocks were arrested. Several people then came to the conclusion they should call and get William Levitt to save them. Right. So they're like, OK, what about our hero, our Lord and Savior? Yeah. Uh, but when they called, they were told William Levitt had left town. What? Like, William had been warned. And he's been doing laundry on Sundays. What? Uh, so he they, he had been warned of the sale, and he'd just flown the coop. Okay. Uh, with all the reporters and photographers, he wanted to be nowhere near the mess. Sure. Sure. The next morning, the Myers family slowly drove back to their house. It was very quiet. They hadn't slept much the night before. Trash and cigarette butts were all over their lawn. <sighs> the front window had uh, holes in it, uh, but they were determined to stay. They made breakfast. Sure. And then the phone started ringing, so they're having a little... Breakfast. Comfortable. What Now, what do you talk about at a breakfast after a night like that, Dave? <laughs> Sports? So how was your night, Jimmy? Well, I cried all night because white people were saying they wanted to blow up the house. All right. Eat your toast. Anyway, your non-white toast. This is, is this normal? I mean, think about what you're, you're just like, what the fuck? These white people are out of their goddamn minds. Here's the other thing is like, as someone who has a kid and knowing what my kid gets scared of. Yeah. Like, this is an unbelievable thing to explain to a child. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, I so mean, you got to make up something. I think this might be Santa territory. You can't make it up because there are crazy fucking white assholes on the lawn yelling shit. Like, there's no making anything up. The kids There sense should the be danger. a kid book called Skews Whitey. <laughs> It could be a whole series. Yeah. What's Whitey up to now? Yeah, the Skews Whitey series. <laughs> Why does he do it? Well, it's just one of those situations for right now somewhere you got to say, Skews Whitey. Ah, uh, fuck. Um, a so, White Wakeman book. So they go back to their house. They start, they're having breakfast. Um, then the phone starts ringing. This time, it was family and friends who had heard about what had happened on the news. And then even strangers started a call from around the country. One woman called to say she was ashamed to I'm be I'm drinking white. chocolate milk again. <laughs> I overreacted, and I and my children will now have chocolate milk again. Plus, Jimmy won't drink regular milk. He'll only drink chocolate milk. So, so. That, that was part of it, but then after uh, thinking about it, I decided that we will all drink I was like, should I not, drink, should I not eat milk. chocolate? Um, and, um, there's, so many, there's so many brown things, you know? Yeah. So... so you know. Anyway. But I, it's a big step for me. I think this has been a good call. And I'll be drinking whiskey again and not just gin, um, as I was for a while. I And the clue is out. And I'm not even sure who that is. That feels like it's- <gasps> White Russians! <laughs> Wait, it, how long can I leave a message? Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm just sorry. babbling. I'm just I'm shouting about drinks again. Also, there's no answering machine, uh, so I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I- And this isn't even a phone. It's a box of- box of tissues I'm holding to oh my, my head. Oh my god, I'm in my closet. My ears are bleeding. <laughs> oh boy, I just realized I took acid. <laughs> okay. So one woman called to say she was watching the news and she felt ashamed to be white. Representative from the Friends Service Association. Hi, I'm from Friends Who Services. What is that? Like what Hi, crazy 50 shit is happening now? Hey, 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 Bobby, what do you say we start a, 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 a friends association, like a friends service association? And we'll just be friends with people. Or that's, or that's where you just get a knock at your door like, how you doing, sir? Uh, your name is Dan? Yeah. And you're friends with Travis? Yeah. Well, uh, Travis didn't want to bring this up, but uh, earlier today you guys went to see a movie and grabbed a bite to eat after. And, uh-huh. um, yeah. Well, you said you'd pay him back yeah. for him picking up the tab, and you never did. Oh. He's a little hurt by that. So. Okay. Oh, we're with Friend Services, by the way. I'm Sergeant. Oh, oh, I'm Sergeant Terrence. Oh, I didn't, know is, I didn't know what was happening. You're Deputy with Clark. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I called you. I called you with the the thing. Yeah, where, I thought you looked familiar. When, when with I gave Joe. Bobby a ride and yeah. he didn't say thank you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That was a fun case. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you're on the other end of this one. So yeah. if you could apologize to Travis, and absolutely. Give him the money, that'd you know, be I love great. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. He just doesn't want to do it. Totally All right. We got a lot of sorry. No, I love you guys. All man. right, yeah. So we got a long night ahead of us, so we're gonna. I don't know what it. this community would be like without the Friends Services Association. Well, look, we're weird and we're here. That's our slogan. <laughs> so FSA, <we're>... baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right, my man. You bet. All right. Uh, so the Friends Services Association said they would help uh, throughout the day. They got a chance. 
don't even Rats know what that meant. Surface. I tried to figure out what that meant. I couldn't figure it out. I will help. Reporters came and asked uh, the Myers if they were going to stay. During the afternoon, the kids went next door to play with the neighbors. And has all this horrible racism made it impossible for you to live here? <laughs> so the the kids go next door to play with the neighborhood kid, the, the neighbor kids next door, who yeah. are a friendly family. Sure. But when they were in the in the yard, suddenly pears started flying across the street. The big bully kid who lived there was doing his thing. So now it's just just throwing pears. The, they they kept describing him as this fat bully kid. Sure. But he's just like winging pears. At the, okay. Okay. The Myers hustled their kids inside, and then the mob began to grow again. Now they were defying police orders not to gather. There were teenage boys in blue jeans with greased hair, teenage girls in plaid sleeveless shirts, pregnant women carrying babies, and lots of men with their arms crossed. So everyone's just... So everything from the outsiders to the sock hop gang. It's... <laughs> So it looks, it's just a weird oh, wow. fucking situation. Jesus, it is very weird. Right, you got the babies, you got the strollers, yeah. you got the just people Bringing hanging everyone out. out. Yeah. Um, cars with Confederate flags start showing up again. That's always a really good So sign. there's a combination of people that live in the neighborhood and then outside what I believe we now call agitators. There's like racists coming in sure. from other places to like, you know, right. hot spot. Yeah. By three, Stoke the fire. <clears throat> by 3.30 p.m., more than 1,000 cars had rolled oh, by. Shit. The crowd just keeps getting bigger. The cops uh, tried but couldn't keep them out. At 8 p.m., the Myers decided to leave again. Oh. This time, the police escor- escorted them out, and the crowd was quiet as they were marched to their car. So, baby so steps? You have a, yeah, right? Baby <laughs> steps. So you have a slight uptick in tolerance. Human behavior by the Right, by the right. <laughs> Um, once the Myers drove away, the crowd came back to life. One man yelled, quote, this is why I moved out of Philadelphia. It's uh, nice that a guy just screamed, I I am partaking in white flight. And yeah. This is not this is not at all what was expected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, police uh, people started saying this was a setup by the NAACP. One woman said, quote, whoever persuaded them to move here naturally picked a model Negro family. It's the families that follow that worry me. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's sweet. That's nice to hear. I like this one. It's that it's who they'll kick the door open I for that worries. I fear a more <laughs> menacing looking it, black man. Isn't it really this though? It really is. It's like, the. I mean, that's such a conundrum because well, she recognizes I no, they're fine. It's just the ones I've been brainwashed to believe exist. Well, but it's it's class like this is classism right here. So yeah. she's she's literally saying, I don't want the the lower classes to come here. But y- it, white, black, yellow, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. That's a different class that can't afford to live here. Right. The people that can live here are professional people like the Myers, who you are no different than except for fucking skin color. Right. Oh my God! Um, so uh, <laughs> cops cops start moving people, um, but they'd move them and then they'd leave, and then the people would go back, and then the cops would come back, and then they move them again, and right. so this just went on and on, and finally the cops just gave up, okay. moving people, and they got in their cars and they drove off. Good, good stuff. Well, that's a job done. So Hal left court, uh, who was nicknamed Mister Levittown. Hello, I'm Mister Levittown. He was considered the voice of the community and a member of the Bristol Township Board of Commissioners. He was leading a meeting a mile away at this time. Sure. At 10 p.m., a mob of angry Levittown, Levittowners burst in and started yelling, do something! <laughs> Jesus. I love, like, I get, like, the racism is there, but there's also this level of just fucking, like, childlike panic of when a kid looks at their dad and is like, stop this from happening, daddy! Yeah. Like, it's just so fucking... Well, you know what's amazing, too, is that we've, like, that that sort of uh, volcanic reaction, like, where people just explode and want change immediately, yeah. has also sort of died in us, even though this one's, yeah. mis, like, misfired. Like, that is something that now we just use our phones to get. We get outraged yeah. at the device, this whereas is, you used to be online. like, yeah, you used to bang on doors with torches. Yeah. And now if you look at, like, today, what is it going to take for us now to get Oh, torched? no, that'll, I mean, when, by the time that comes, it's going to be like, oh, this is ending? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll be underwater like, we should have tried. So these people are mad that the police kept making them leave the Myers lawn. 
One guy yelled, quote, my wife is foreign born and she says the police there. My wife is foreign born and she says the police here are worse than in Nazi Germany. <laughs> wow. OK, everybody. So basically, there's like a Jerry Springer vibe out on the line. <laughs> We're just the crazy. No, craziest. this guy's at the meeting. This guy came to the town oh, right, commissioner right, meeting. Oh, right, 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 right. So he's saying that the commission should ban blacks from Levittown. So that's what they're all demanding. They're demanding the commission ban blacks from Levittown and saying that because they won't ban blacks, they're like Nazis. Right. Wow. So I mean, it's that's already a, that's a reach that I mean, hurts your spine. It's just a couple years after the war, and they've already lost the understanding of what Nazis are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty fast too. The commissioners tried to explain to the group that because of the law and what the courts had ruled, they had no legal standing to ban black people. The mob was not having it. No quote. There's no law in this land that says we have to live alongside them. Alongside them, uh, that actually, family moved in. Caused the riot, not us. Um, I actually, uh, they're the riot starters. A couple, couple things, real quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. You started the riot. No, no, they did. They moved in. Nope. And, How uh, am I supposed to react to people moving in who are black? Uh, well, like it's the law. Um, no. Okay, you have. A, okay, I don't think we can. No, uh, no, no. Okay, all right. Uh, does anyone else want to say anything? Mommy. Okay, look. There's. A, I want my mommy. There's a line of people behind you who also have things to say, sir. So you're gonna need. To... Uh, what are you crying? For? Someone. There's black people moving here. Okay, all right. Well, now it's taking a shocking turn. Someone put a little, put a banky on him and hold it, hold him. <laughs> hey, hey, little guy. I don't like it anymore. Little guy, listen. That's the law. Okay, little cutie. Uh, shh, shh, shh. Why don't you do me a favor? The black guy. The, shh, shh, shh. Here's, what, we, here's what we're gonna do. Here's face. what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, we're gonna take you to your house. Uh, we're gonna put you on the couch. Uh, okay, we're gonna give you some apple slices, some uh, warm, warm milk, okay. maybe a little chocolate okay. in the milk, but not a lot. Okay. And then you're gonna take a little nap and see how you feel when you wake up. See, okay. and I, we, what we need from you is big boy strength. Okay, okay. need you to be a big boy. Yeah. Okay. 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 A big white guy. Well, let's stop putting race on it. Okay. okay. That's kind of what we're trying to get away from over here. No, 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 no. So <laughs> oh, no, no, no. All right, all right. Come on, guys. You put him in my arms. Let me rock him. <laughs> so the mob's not having it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Levittown told them it was time for them all to go home. <laughs> Is that how mobs work? All right, mob. I think you're about done all here. All right, gentlemen. All right, mob. I've heard enough. Um... But then a second group poured in right at that moment. Now there were about a hundred shouting people. Hey, the we're the second mob. <laughs> hey, we're mob two. Hey, we're night mob. So basically, what was happening was the cops were clearing the street, and when they did, a bunch of people would go, "We gotta go to the meeting." <laughs> and then okay. they, yeah, it was the whole. Good God. Uh, a woman yelled, "Quote: You should tell that black cock sucking son of a bitch to get the hell out of here." Now she's talking about Daisy. Okay. Oh wow. Uh, Mr. Levittown had had it. He started yelling at them. He yelled at her, quote, You punk, get out of here. Every one of you, get out of here. Then Mr. Levittown started crying as he yelled because the precious place he lived in was crumbling in front of his eyes. Quote, crying and yelling. She lives in America. She has a right to live wherever she wishes. Wow. What's going on there? Well, the fucking, the guys who are normal are like, what the fuck is happening? My But that's Mr. Levittown breaking the, down? Yeah, because he, what he sees is like, oh my God, all these people I live with are fucking monsters. Okay, gotcha. So he's having a different breakdown. Sure. Which we recently experienced as a nation. Sure. Oh, man. Uh, so Jesus. Mr. The meeting ended, Mr. Levittown went home, and when he got there, one of the leaders of the pack called and said the cops wouldn't let them meet. And Mr. Levittown screamed in the phone, put a goddamn flag on your house and go meet. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. Wait, who's he saying that to? One of the racist guys who was. So he's saying, put a flag on your house and yeah, go meet. Yeah, because you want to have a fucking meeting, put a flag on your house and have a meeting. Okay. Um, the next day, I guess you need a flag to have an official. Sort of... I mean, I think this is one of those digs that gets lost in the time. Yeah, but it was good. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm sure at the time he was like, "Oh, how dare you!" Oh, he said to put a flag on our house and have one. Can you believe that? So the nerve. This is what's happening outside the meeting. Oh my god. So now. Uh, oh, this might be the next day. Wait, let me let me go back. I'll put that up here. Yeah, yeah, that's the next day. I apologize. Um, oh, I so... don't like where we're headed. 
<laughs> oh, God. The next day, this is big news. Newspaper and magazine reporters uh, from Philadelphia, New York, and other U.S. cities descended on Levittown. TV and radio crews were all over the place. The Levittown chief of police wired the governor, quote, the citizens of Levittown are out of control. He asked for the state police to come. The governor made a statement condemning the mobs. Some people came to support the Myers, but they were far dwarfed by the haters. About a mile from the Myers' home, 600 protesters gathered the next night uh, outside a veteran of foreign, a veteran of foreign wars post. So that was the picture I just put up. So that this is, is crazy. this is outside a meeting of uh, a little while, a, if, about a if, mile away from where black people have moved. If you're the Myers, are you like? You probably can't even answer this, but I wonder how much is actual like logistical predicament as far as you've just moved and bought a place or whatever. Yeah, what are you going to do? And how mu- and how much is like fuck these people? No, logistically you you know, the only pl- they were going to his dad's house at night. You can't move into your parents' house right. when you've got a family right. and you've put all your money into this fucking house. Right. Logistically you're fucked. Yeah, okay. Um so uh so the this at the VA the VFW this big fucking meeting is happening it had been rented for a dollar what because one of the lead racists was a member and so he rents it and they're like yeah yeah we'll help you out with that great cause leaders took to the stage and gave speeches denouncing the Myers some priests had come to try and talk some sense into the crowd but it didn't go well we just want to talk about hanging up laundry on Sundays you guys are still doing it uh, one man tried to fight one of the priests I'll, t- I'll show him after that, the man said he was the chairman of the, quote, Levittown Betterment Committee. He just came up with that? They were, they had just formed. I a- beat up a priest. I'm in charge of the betterment part now. <laughs> you know, if you beat up a priest, then you're part of the li- making things good. It's very simple. It's, as, it's simple like catching a leprechaun and getting a wish. <laughs> if you beat up a priest, you become in charge of betterment. The purpose of the committee was to find, quote, legal ways of force to get the Myers to move out. They picked volunteers to go door to door in Levittown to talk to people to help drive the Myers out. All right. Who wants the canvas? People yelled out different. They were. They were fucking canvas. No. Yeah. It's going to be really comfortable to have a uh, an election. People uh, yelled out different ideas of ways to get them out. One man yelled, quote, burn them out. OK, we're not. Uh, let's. Not do those right away, Gus. I'm sure there were cheers when they said that. I bet, yeah. No, it feels like Springer. Uh, At the end of the meeting, the Levittown Betterment Committee, now a thousand strong, marched to the Myers' home. The Myers weren't even there. They had gone to Bill's parents' house in York, but when the mob got to Deep Green Lane, they found 21 straight troopers with clubs guarding the house. This did not stop them. Using union techniques. Let's see if I can find this picture. Um, That's better than a fence. So, oh, those are the lines. Um, so they're using union techniques. Oh yeah, here it is. So they start they start protest marching. So they're in they're in groups of two and they're marching like they're in a picket line. Okay. Uh, and they're marching in pairs. There's teenagers, parents, mothers, babies, and strollers. Um, they're clapping their hands in rhythm. They went around the block. So now they've formed this big just right. picket line of people around the block, right. which is which are you saw the blocks, they're yeah, fucking yeah. huge yeah. blocks. Um, so someone couldn't handle the simple protest method and threw a rock at the side of the house. Elsewhere, uh, classic racists were really coming out of the woodwork. At the nearby Levittown Walt Disney Elementary School, an eight foot bamboo cross wrapped in turpentine soaked rags was set on fire. Oh, my. Well, that's a lot. You just <coughs> jammed a lot into one sentence. At okay. the Disney what? The Di- Walt, Walt Disney, Disney Elementary School. Okay. So this means the Klan is here. Oh, boy. Because no one else is going to burn a cross. It's the fucking Klan. Sure. The Klan's arrived. Right. Um, another man threw a rock through one of the Myers windows in front of a reporter, then said to the reporter, quote, he's probably a nice guy, but every time I look at him, I see a 2000 drop off in the value of my house. Oh my God. So this is just a business, tra- this is just a business thing I'm doing here. When I'm throwing a rock, it's not like I hate this guy. I'm mad at him. It's just like, you know, I gotta, I, it's, it's to make money. It's a small sect of uh, racists called business racists. I'm making money. I'm making money. Uh, the nights and days just go on like this. Crowds are gathering, uh, they're throwing rocks, they're protesting against this black family. Rumors are swirling. I heard they're not even black. 
one guy that's an interview was like there he goes the rumors are so crazy there's no reason to even tell him like if you if you told if i told you this you would say that's insane he goes but then everyone's believing it what, um, some, what are they people thought the myers had been sent uh and their house was paid for by black agitators okay uh another was that the myers just moved from white neighborhood to white neighborhood all across the country doing the same thing that sounds <laughs> super plausible. that sounds like the, that out sounds, of the ones i've heard so far that yeah. one sounds likely yeah. i mean that's that's exactly what you i would know, think a pregnant woman would do yeah no just definitely yeah for sure just well she's probably not even pregnant dave Oh my she's God! I just got a pillow under there. Aaron's yawning. They're going to Aaron's yawning. Aaron's yawning. Oh, yelling. Yawning. Okay, yawning. Worse. <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> I guess this is what we're doing now. The cross burned. <laughs> um, the cross was burned in the Weschler's yard, right? Uh, the people who originally sold the house to the Myers. The, oh, oh, okay, the right. Jewish in couple. their new house. Okay, right. Yep. Okay. Another cross was burned outside a friendly Quaker's home who had spoken out about the Myers' right to live where they wanted. Okay. So now anybody who comes out and says, You're getting leave cr- them alone, this is, this is how America should be, they're right. getting targeted. Right. Um, bullets were embedded in that cross, and when it was burned, they went off. Just kind of a... Kind of a cool feature, just to sort of change the metallicing of the KKK. Cross. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not for uh, cross burning, no. but um, but upgrades are cool. I'm thinking this one. Yeah, you've got like the Banksy of the KKK crosses. This one's gonna be really great. Um, the Levittown Betterment Committee, who was now being called by. You think if somebody had the uh, smarts to start pulling bullets in them, they'd start figuring out better tactics than just like let's burn it again. Well, some guys are just super into cross burning, yeah. and it's like tradition. And yeah, it and is tradition. It's about um, it's actually uh, about their ancestors more than it is about. It's an homage, man. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Levittown Betterment Committee, which now people who support the Myers are calling it the Bitterment Committee. Oh, keep biting. fucking killing it. They're knocking on doors with a petition, quote, protesting the mixing of Negroes in our previously all-white community and asking people to sign it. So you can't have language in a contract that says whites only, but you can have a betterment commission going door-to-door asking to sign a petition to get black people out? Yeah. Okay. That's freedom of speech. Thank you. A lot of people signed it. A lot of people did not. Those who disagreed created this Citizens Committee for Levittown. They, so now there's another? Okay, so that's like super packed. There's battling battling committees. Okay. They circulated a petition that condemned the violence and appealed for calm. Uh, we want you to sign a petition that says that you don't like the other petition, <laughs> and then this petition that says no more petitioning. White Levittown was breaking down along Civil War lines all because a black family had moved in. A group moved into an empty house right behind the Myers. They unfurled a giant Confederate flag and loudly played the song Old Man River all day and all night, hoping to drive the Myers away. They ended up driving themselves away. Yeah, right? They weren't that bothered by it. Daisy, quote, I thought it was kind of funny. Somebody asked if we could stand the noise, and I said if the neighbors can stand it, we can too. Yeah. So at this point, they're just like... Right. Now I it's feel like they've, they've been through the worst of it, yeah. and so now they're seeing just stupid bullshit. Right, and they know... Right. Like, it feels like maybe... and I, You know, you can't step in their shoes but it feels like maybe they're like well if we haven't been shot at or actually attacked now it's probably not going to happen yeah well when the tactic becomes we're going to play music yeah i think you're sort of like they're crying it out by now newspapers from all over the world are carrying the myers story it's in the new york times the washington post the london times the manchester guardian and pravda most of them attacked uh, levittown's racial bigotry and the pr was bad but not locally the four major newspapers that served the levittown area were silent on the subject an editorial in the Philadelphia Daily News condemned the violence but said, quote, civil rights are not involved here. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, then what the fuck is it? Well, yeah, what are you blaming it on? What? What? Uh, I mean, at least there's a recognition of reality I mean, from it's others. It's not about civil rights. It's just black people moving We in. condemn it, but it's not racist. Goodbye. Got nothing to do with that. Um... And, uh, a Philadelphia Evening Bulletin editorial said it was okay to protest a Negro moving into their community. Uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer and Levittown Times did no took no editorial stance whatsoever. The Levittown Times didn't have any no stand no t- took the no Levittown position. Times didn't have anything on it. Took no position. <laughs> what the fuck? 
fuck is on the front page of the Levittown Probably Times? Baseball scores. What's going on with the town? Fences, pro and con. On the seventh night, over 500 gathered, but the state troopers decided to end it. This time, they pushed the crowd back a block from the Myers home and made sure they stayed back. So for the first time ever now, they've pushed them away from the house. Okay. The crowd responded by throwing bricks and rocks at the troopers, right? So they're they're pushing them back. Um well, that's when troopers wore chin straps, just the way I like them. I know, right? They got chin straps, but they got their fucking sticks out, which means they can fucking... Look at that kid. Why would you bring your fucking kid to your white race rally? Like, <laughs> Well, when you put it like that, Dave. I mean, Jesus Christ. Leave the kids at home for your fucking bullshit. Um, I don't want them growing up open-minded. So people start throwing rocks at the troopers. The cops are seriously not down with that because they're cops. Yeah. And they charged, and they just start beating the shit out of the crowd with their batons. Men were hit on the head, and... I read this in a newspaper. Women were hit on their buttocks. <laughs> um, what? Oh. Well, weird compromise they found. The loophole is the bottom. Uh, so many in the crowd became hysterical. Now that totally makes sense because these are suburban, like these are these are suburban people who uh, are not used to sure. what it's really fucking like out there on the streets. Sure. Yeah. If you actually want to protest and get real about something. Yeah. No, they moved into Levittown. So so now they're in a total fucking panic. Right. Um, Suddenly being racist uh, in Levittown was dangerous. One police officer was hit on the head by a rock and laid out. Oof. Like knocked out. Yeah, okay. Um, so that image goes all around the world. Okay. Um, uh, so obviously other cops really not down with that. He has a concussion. He's taken the hospital. Uh, the, li- the officer lying flat on the lawn was caught by news cameras. Arrests were made. Some people in the crowd had shouted Gestapo at the police. Sure. Again, not understand the level of irony. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. After the melee, so the fight's over, the cops have beat everybody up. Some of the larger crowd hung around until the early morning hours. Okay. At one point, they stood together and sang America, also known as my country, tis of thee. It's at like four in the morning. There's a bunch of fucking dumbass racists singing my country. <laughs> oh, my God. Tis of thee. Oh. But after that night, one more time. The, after that night, the mob activity was over. The police made it known after one of theirs was injured, there would be no more crowds forming, and they would handle it with violence. Right. Okay. So you know, once you injure a cop, it's yeah, a, then it's a, then it's real. Once it's in your backyard, it's a totally different game yeah, at that yeah. point. Um, the state police stayed around for a month and protected the, protected the Myers home. An injunction was obtained against the Betterman <laughs> Group Committee. <laughs> Forbidding <laughs> harassment. Their slow crawl to death. <laughs> the Betterment Committee. So they're forbidding, you know, the protests against the family. So I'm not sure what we're doing anymore at the Betterment Committee, gang. Seems like we just drink coffee and eat pie once a week at this point. Catch up. Well, that's better. Yeah. Um, the Weschler's house was painted with big red uh, KKK letters. Well, then you just paint it all red. Um, do I not have that one? Do you have that one, uh, Aaron? Yeah, so they paint it, and then he put an O in oh, front of it, so better. it says OK. <laughs> better. I said paint it red. That's better. OK, OK, OK. I mean. Lou, Lou Weschler got a letter from the Ku Klux Klan telling him to shut up or else. Anyone who spoke out and said the Myers deserved to live uh, in Levittown were subject to threats and abuse. Two people were convicted of burning the cross on the Weschler's lawn. The press turned against William Levitt and his racist policies. The NAACP filed charges of discrimination against him, but William kept fighting to keep his community segregated. He clung to his racist policies. He thought the people who wanted to let blacks live in Levittown were also uh, communists. The company barred those uh, for integration from meeting on Levittown property. Uh, it also evicted two residents who invited black children from a neighboring community to their homes. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. Actually, they just invited kids over to play, and they were kicked out of their house. Protests were held in Levittowns to open up uh, communities to minorities. So there's protests. So now it's like a thing, right? Yeah. So now Levittowns are a thing, and there's protests happening. I don't think this is on the TV. but oh. So there's, like, actual protests. Like so, that's a pro. 
there's people in the background who are against uh, racist policies, and, and then the white nationalist assholes in the front. What, what the guy with the sign that says "Keep them white"? What is, what side is he on? Um, he is actually it's that guy, and the one behind that says "Integration stinks." Yeah. He's, what side are they on? Um, they are actually uh, union guys. Okay, they're there for another thing. Yeah, they're they're just trying to keep. That's their the jobs. fencers' union. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> keep them white. So through it all, the Myers uh, stayed. They filed for orders of protection against the neighbors who had gathered on their lawn. So anybody who was involved, they fired, filed protection orders. They had a lawyer that was had done this around the country, and right. he was helping out. Um, they made friends in the neighborhood because there's also that's the thing about watching that documentary is there's a lot of people who are like, what the fuck is going on? Like, like the the assholes are a minority, yeah. but a loud louder. one. Yeah. Um, Boy, I wonder what that's like. Uh, one day the group leader who had given speeches on their lawn came to their front door. Okay. He was running for office and asked for their vote. <laughs> what? A, the f- what? <laughs> what? Every vote counts. I know that, uh, I know that we've had our differences and I'm, I'm actually running for office to get you kicked out, but I could really use your vote. It'd be nice and neighborly of you to vote for me. Um, they did not vote for him. <clears throat> uh, why? A second black family, the Mosbys, moved in in uh, 1958. The reaction was much more subdued, but they dealt with quite a bit of racism. Their daughter said she was beaten up at school every day. The mother of the family didn't believe in taking uh, much shit. Soon after they moved in, a car pulled up and men started yelling obscenities. So Julia Mosby grabbed a baseball bat, ran outside, and started beating the shit out of their car. That's and the mean, men drove off. There you go. There She's you go. fucking awesome. This is a statement early. I mean, I wish that was on film because yeah. that's like the greatest moment. Yeah. Uh, the Myers moved back to York in 1961, so they lasted four years. Okay. I bet you 100 bucks is because of the kids. Right. Um, William Levitt eventually sold his stake in his company. Uh, he sold it for what would be $680 million today. Shit. Wow, he looks like the. He finally formed into what I thought he should look like early. Doesn't he look like he's just sh- like he's out of de- trading places? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the communities became less segregated after he sold them. Um, less segregated. Less segregated. Uh, the ge- watching the documentary, the general feeling in Levittown was that they weren't against minorities moving in. While sixty thousand people lived there, only a thousand or so went out on the streets to protest. Wow. So, I mean, numbers would have been nice for 2000 to show up and say it's okay. Wow. Uh, uh, Hofstra University professor Herbert Rosenbaum, who lived there, said, quote, in those years, even liberal people like ourselves tended to take residential segregation for granted without approving it. None of us went out into the street to change it. So admittedly saying we could have done something. But then, you know, but then you're literally like it, it, it is the. It is at that point the job of cops because if you go out on the street and you're fight, then you're fighting in the streets. You're literally fighting your neighbors in the streets. Well, Dave, and where I does think that lead? I mean, it's, that, it's. I think that's what would we'd call 2019. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would, I always, I'm a, a huge proponent of taking out the leaders. <laughs> but that's just me. All right. <laughs> Easy anthem. Huge proponent. Easy anthem. William Levitt had uh, changed America. He created a country full of suburbanites uh, and white flight. The effect he had will always be felt. Great American Bill O'Reilly was raised in a Levittown community called South Westbury. Obviously, it had no effect on him. No. It's good that he came out of that. William uh, Levitt died in 1994, saddled with uh, great debt from continually trying to repeat the success of Levittown and failing. In 1987, William Myers died at his home at age 65, and Daisy died in 2011 at age 86. On the campaign trail, Donald Trump would talk about the success of Levittown. Oh, God, really? It's called the dog whistle. Oh, my God. I didn't even know the dogs. I didn't even know that was whistling. Yeah, yeah, dogs whistle. I guess that's why it's a dog whistle, huh? Dogs have whistles. Because some of us other animals can't hear it. How do you feel? Uh, You know, the usual. Uh, Disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, Angry. Um, it's the first family moving into Levittown, aren't they? Wow. Yeah, it's uh, you know, when you well, there's a, there's there's just so much like obviously there's a lot of race race shit going on right now, but when you when you when you get down to the oh the systemic nature of it and how 
access was denied. So that's that's not just like that's not just exclusion and 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 white people. That's all those people bought houses for cheap. Yeah. And then built up equity and money and became wealthier because of it. Right. And black families were excluded from that. Right. And so when people say like, well, why, why didn't they fucking leave me? Well, they weren't allowed to. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Like all that became money that people then sold and bought new house. Like that's 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 supposedly the American dream. Just you're just excluding people from it. Well, I think that's a part of the American dream. <laughs> 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 I think that's I think that's insinuated a little. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think that today, if we had our Supreme Court, I oh, think that I th- they would have ruled against it, absolutely. and we would have uh, a different story right now. Absolutely. And uh, who knows what that would have done? You know. Absolutely. I think I was thinking that the whole time. That really is that, uh, and it, that happened a lot. You yeah, know, yeah, where yeah. it would come down to the Supreme Court. Supreme and Court has would... made some of the most horrific and dehumanizing decisions in the history of mankind like yeah. they have they have been at times of fucking abomination yeah and i'm sorry but citizens united has completely unraveled yeah. america and they've destroyed it no you think now i i think when you think of the court now it's like they're i mean man they're fucking some monsters it's not it. i and yeah i mean like i i need to go to ruth gator Ruth Ruth Ginsburg Ruth Bader Ginsburg's house daily and like hydrate her. Well, you wouldn't want to talk to her about Colin Kaepernick, though, would you? No. (laughs) But but that's the problem, right? Is like you're like uh, truly that's that that's what is always so amazing is like, you know, the way that it's an argument down to Republicans or Democrats, and you're just like, I mean, when you've lived in it enough, you're just like they just that we need more goddamn choices. We can't just you know we don't need anymore. You know we don't need old people. Yeah. You need, oh, to, yeah. you need to get to a certain age and yeah. get the fuck out. Because yeah. you know why? Not because you're too old. Because you don't know what the fuck is happening anymore. And we sent we sent someone a couple years ago when uh, there was a patent troll coming after uh, a podcast. And we, we oh, yeah. raised like $60,000. We went through the EFF. We sent, a, we sent lawyers up there. And I when it happened, I talked to one of the women because I was one of the guys leading it. And she said, Dave, I, I can't talk to them about podcasts because I go up to the hill and 80% of them don't know what email is because they're so rich and they're so distanced from what normal people do that they don't use email. They're told stuff by people. Yeah. So you're talking about podcasts? I'm literally saying they're too old and rich to know what the fuck is happening in the world. Yeah. That's who represents us. So these yeah. fucking rich, there's no reason in the world a Supreme Court justice would do that for life. Yeah. No fucking reason yeah. in the world. Yeah. So stupid. Yeah. And then it's the same thing with, Di- like, Diane Feinstein. She's gonna be fucking eighty nine or some shit if she wins again. Oh, no. Fuck that. Oh, well, also, like, how do you how do you govern when like you don't need to worry about twenty years from now? Right. Like, how how are you in the headspace of like? I mean, truly, that's just like, that's not, you know, that's like that's like worry. Like, who worries about the next hotel guest? Yeah. You know, nobody gives a shit. Well. Anyway. Cool. Anyway, the Supreme Court ruled right on that. Yeah. <laughs> That'll change. All right. <laughs> anyway, that's white flight. That's how it started, and it worked out great. Party. Um, anything? No. Is <laughs> what, what sad you inside? S- yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna keep going, but yeah, of course. And and I'm wor- like, yeah, genuinely, like you think about the future, and it's like, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, it's just what country you should live in. No. Yeah. Got a lot of choices. I think I might move to one of those shitholes. Yeah, baby. (laughs) Oh, that was fun. We like to laugh.